Hello, this is Dennis with A1 Telephone Service and Repair, A1 Electronics. You can reach us on the web at www.a1-telephone.com and you can also reach us at 618-235-6959. Today I want to show you a really cool telephone. This is kind of an Art Deco-ish type style telephone and uh, this is Paul's telephone from New York and it's a Metropolis but it's made by Con Air and uh, Paul's got a note he talks about how the phone does not ring and these type of phones since they're repos um, they have a actual bell in them and it is not ringing so what we're going to do this is the initial check out of this telephone we're going to go ahead and try to ring the telephone so I'll go ahead and ring it with the analyzer and Paul's totally right it does not ring so we're going to let that go a couple times we'll answer it give you some dial tone but if you notice there's a rattle in the handset so that's not what Paul didn't mention that, but we're going to take care of that. We're going to get him squared away on that. I'm going to go ahead and walk through the numbers here. I'm going to end in a 2. I'm going to hang up. I'm going to hit redial. Should end in a 2 here on the analyzer. And then I'm going to transmit into the handset. But this uh, unit also has a mute button, so I'm going to go ahead while I'm talking here, and you can see the red light on the analyzer. I'm going to push the mute button, so that did knock us out when I pushed the mute button, but you have to hold it down. So now I'll let it up, and you see it again. It's transmitting, and now it's stopped, and now it's transmitting again. So we know that the telephone has some issues. It has a rattle in the handset. down around the transmitter and the bell does not ring. Now I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of a look at this telephone. These are well-made telephones. Uh, Conair made some pretty cool telephones and the Metropolis version was one of them. And this telephone does have a bell off and on switch for the ringer here. And it is in the on mode. And then it has a PNT switch, would be pulse and tone. So we're going to go ahead and open this telephone up. And we're going to be troubleshooting this telephone. We'll get these screws out of here and get a look at this telephone here. And I'm not sure if this is something that just stopped working for Paul or if he acquired this telephone somewhere and when he got it, it did not ring. We'll get a look at this guy. So here's our main PC board. And that's kind of what everything looks like on the inside. It's always nice to see a, a metal bottom, you know, because so many of them nowadays are plastic. And yes, we have a bell here. And so what it comes down to is uh, I'm going to take a break from the video and I'm going to be doing some uh, troubleshooting on this telephone and we're going to get uh, Paul straightened out here so that he can enjoy his telephone again. We'll be right back. Okay, we're kind of in the middle of uh, troubleshooting right now and so I have went through the board and checked that 
and made sure that all the uh, circuit to the bell was fine, and it is. And it turns out that, and I'm going to show you this, this is a solenoid. And they use these in these bells, and then this plate kind of hooks on and connects this way. And then your bell sits on top of that, and there's a screw in it. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and ring this solenoid. And what you're going to do is you're going to see an axle shoot back and forth. And it works on the theory of a bounce. So when you have your cycles going through it, it wants to bounce in different directions because of the magnets. I'm going to kind of give you a look at this. You see that kick back and forth, that open axle? Let that go a couple times. And then we also want to hold it. I'll hold it. Okay. It's kicking pretty good now. And so what I want to do is I also want to take this coil out. And I want to look and see if that coil's been damaged any. Um, somehow it may have gotten um, smashed. Maybe it wasn't right from the factory to begin with, but I want to inspect the coil, and so what I'll do is uh, I'll take it apart. And I want to pull the coil out, and I'm going to unwrap the tape from it. And I want to make sure that we don't have any kind of smashes in the uh, line and that we have good connections here. And once I make that decision, that determination, we can put it all back together again. I want to straighten it up and put it all back together again. Because if they're crimped or smashed in a certain way, uh, they won't ring properly. They'll hang up. And so we're going to kind of take another short break from the video, and um, I'm going to inspect this coil for the solenoid. And uh, we'll be back in a little bit. Okay, we're back. And we did find a, uh, must have been from the factory, I'm just not sure. Uh, it doesn't look like anybody was in the uh, telephone before, but we did find a gouge in the uh, winding of this uh, coil. And so what you basically have to do is I'm going to show you uh, a way to rewind a coil and you have to go real slow because basically what happens here is this wire is thinner than hair. And so I'm going to go real slow to start this out. notice the coil is moving back and forth. That's because when they wind the winding on these uh, spools, they go from one side to the other and back and forth in a zigzag. And that's basically how it's going to come off the uh, spool.
anyway, as you can see, you don't want to go too fast because you'll break the wire. Now, we're not going to repair um, Paul's telephone this way, but believe me, I've done my share of repairing coil windings in the past, and that is one way that you can do it. And normally, you would want to go very, very slow because if you break the winding, you're done. And uh, you would have to repair the winding and keep it away from the other part of the winding so that there was no crossover. And so basically that's what it comes down to. But that's how it's done. And uh, for the video, kind of shows you what happens. Now here's the indention. That's how far the indention made it into this winding. It's all the way down in here. And that could have been a, a factory situation, but it got uh, it got damaged, and that's the result of it. A bell that didn't work very well, or a bell that only works sometimes, and probably the only reason it worked for me when I took it apart was I disturbed it a little bit. But that's a dent, and it's probably from the factory. And so we're going to take a short break now, and we're going to replace the bell. Be right back. Okay, we're back now. And so one of the reasons why we did not repair the winding on this bell was just for the simple fact that it's got an indention here. And the coil started out way out here on the spool. So if the dent made it that far into the spool of wire, then you can almost guess that it's probably been damaged enough to short out there. And so that's why we did not repair this one. And I don't know if the video is picking that up, but there's a good dent right there, probably from the factory or when it was installed. So what we've done is we've located a new bell, and we're going to go ahead and install that. I get these screws in there and then I want to get it soldered into the main PC board and we can move on to the handset because the handset has a bad rattle in it and I want to take care of that for Paul. We also want to tin these wires real quick, so I have to clean my soldering gun. Just removing the old wires now. And our wires are long enough on this new bell that we don't have to worry about 
what side of the board we're on. So now we can do a little test. Let that go one more time since that was the issue. I'm going to turn it off and you'll watch your ring cycle go by. Every time that red light lights, I'll let it go by one more time. And I'll catch it on a ring cycle, turn it on. Go ahead and stop the ring. Now what we want to do is uh, I'm going to take another short break and I want to get into the handset here and I want to find out what that rattle is. So we'll be right back. Okay. It's a good thing that we got to this handset because there is a very large uh, washers that they installed on these handsets as a weight and they were broke free and at any time it could have interfered with uh, the microphone connections here and so um, that's not good it would have ripped them apart so we have that re-epoxied and uh, that should dry up pretty nice and so what we're going to do is we're going to set everything back in the handset put our ring back on and we'll just be gentle with that until it dries because it, it fit in there pretty good so we're okay with that the next thing we want to do is just start putting our unit back together again make sure I get my wires the way I want them. start re-securing everything. sure everything's fitting back to normal again like it's supposed to. Let me start reinstalling that.
then we can do some final checks here once I get this back together again. I'm going to go ahead and move our uh, old bell out of the way. We don't need that any longer. Make sure we get everything locked in the way it's supposed to be. Now we can do some final checks. Okay, we're back now. We had to take a short break. We were getting a little too much video built up on the unit, so uh, we dumped some of the video. Now we can do some final checks. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and ring the telephone. I'm going to let that go a few times because that was one of the issues. Now what I'm going to do is catch it on a ring cycle and turn it off. Now catch it on the next ring cycle and turn it on. We want to make sure our switch is working. Give you some dial tone. We'll go ahead and go through our walk through our numbers. And we are in the pulse mode, so we know that works. So now we want to Turn it over into the tone, dial tone, walk through our numbers again. I'm going to end in a 2. I'm going to hang up and I'm going to hit redial. Analyzer should end in a 2. Now I'm going to go ahead and transmit into the handset. 
If you watch this red indicator light on the analyzer, that's 100% modulation every time I transmit, and that light lights. Hello, hello. Now I'm going to press the mute button, and the light went away. I'm going to release the mute button, and we have uh, transmit again. So now we know everything is working on this telephone. We can move it over into a regular telephone line, and uh, we'll call it like, say, a time and temp. Give you some dial tone. We don't have any rattling anymore. Good evening. Shop online anytime at Offenberg.com. A short drive to great value. Today is Monday, May 7th. The time is 9.02. Current temperature 72 degrees. Now the Belleville area weather forecast. Becoming partly cloudy overnight, lows in the upper 50s, partly cloudy on Tuesday, high in the middle 70s. Okay. We'll call one other number. We'll call my number. It'll be busy. Okay. So we'll move it back over into the analyzer since the bell was one of the issues. And we'll go ahead and ring it a couple times. Let it go one more time. Some dial tone. Now that we know that this telephone has been repaired, we can get this telephone back to Paul. And he's got a cool phone here. This is a Conair. It's a Metropolis. Uh, you don't, you know, they're around. They're kind of hard to get a hold of because. They don't actually make these anymore, I don't believe. And so, uh, you know, it, it's a cool phone and Paul likes it. And uh, I think most anybody would. So it's a very Art Deco-ish type telephone. And uh, it's just a, you know, a neat conversation piece. So anyway, Paul will be happy to get this back, I'm sure. This is Dennis with A1 Telephone Service and Repair, A1 Electronics. You can reach us on the web at www dot a one hyphen telephone dot com and you can also reach us at six one eight two three five six nine five nine. Thank you for watching and have a great day.